Hello and welcome to this Edexcel GCSE Geography Exam Skills video. Um, this one is looking at command words and key terms in the questions and this is part one and we're going to be looking at the point marked answers. Um, this is mainly an explanation of meaning of the command words and the mark schemes that you'll expect to find. Um, what we've done is looked generically at the past papers and looked at the key patterns of the type of questions that occur and how to answer them. There will be variations to these and you need to read the questions carefully um, and the percentage of marks for each may vary for each paper and throughout each year. But this gives you a general overview of the kind of things that you can expect. So looking at the command words, these are from the specification and you can see we have split them into two sections. On the left hand side, at the top end we have the shorter answers uh, and then moving through in degrees of difficulty up to the explain and suggest. These are all the point marked answers that we'll be looking at today. On the right hand side here we can see the traditional essay style questions and we'll look at those in another video. Now this again is from the specification and this breaks down how many marks you would expect to see for each of the different command words. So we can see that for identify, state, name, define, we're only going to be worth one mark, possibly two marks sometimes because there are some variations within the paper. But I'll go through that in more detail. And we can see that looking at today, we're looking up to explain and suggest. So these will be worth up to four marks and I'll try and break down and how you can understand how to answer those by looking at the question and the marks available. Now when you analyze the papers there isn't a foundation and a higher paper. The way that it's differentiated is the type of questions that you will get. Now the basic knowledge questions, this is being able to know the key terms, know some basic math skills, being able to draw on graphs or being able to use basic uh, map skills. This is worth about a third of the marks and if you were able to get this third of the marks then that would get you up to and around a level three, around the 30% mark, providing you got all of those correct. So again, important to know your key terms because they will form the basis of this. If you don't know your key terms and your basic skills, you won't be able to access even these. So the revision and interleaved practice and retrieval is important for those. We then have the understanding questions, the explain and suggest, and this is giving reasons for things. This is worth about another 30% <clears throat> of the marks. So this is starting to get to the higher order skills and being able to do the understand questions well and the knowledge questions well will start to get you into the grade five and six categories. Then we have the application questions. This is where you apply your knowledge and you have to um, rank them, evaluate them and use resources in your answers. And this is worth the next third of the marks. And this is what's going to give you the grade seven, eight and nines. OK, so although there aren't high foundation and high in papers, the papers are differentiated with these different marks. And what you will notice as you go through each of the questions, they start off with the easier, uh, lower score marks and then get more difficult as you go along. So it's differentiated throughout the paper. OK, now it's also important to realise that when you break them down for papers one and two, paper three is different. We'll look at that another time. But around 10% of the marks are based on mathematical questions, things like drawing or plotting on a graph, calculating key figures, um, and looking at things like the mean, median, mode, range, etc. There's also about 10% of the marks are given over to geographical map skills. And again, we'll go through those in more detail, but there will be another video on the map skills. And if you look at the playlist, there will be a skills playlist as well. And then, Around 40% of the questions will be based on resources and figures. So you've got to make sure you read the information in the question to help you. That's really important. So let's look at the first ones, first questions. 
Identify state and name. <clears throat> they should be one more, but sometimes they can be worth two. They may be multiple choice questions, and if you do, make sure you know how to answer it by putting an X in the box. Read the question carefully, because sometimes it might say state one or state two. So make sure you know how many different things you've got to give. So look at the marks available at the side of the question. It may well be based on a resource, a picture, a map, a diagram, a door, drawing, or some statistics. So make sure you refer to those, read all parts of the paper. And you may need to look at your map skills, four figures and six figure grid references, knowing how to measure distance, knowing how to judge uh, direction, being able to use the scale, know what the symbols are, know what contours mean, etc. And sometimes you'll be able to apply that understanding as well. So let's look at some of the simple questions first of all. So this is what you're going to find at the lower end of the scale. So the UK's physical landscape is made up of different rock types. Study figure one in the resource booklet. So you'll have to turn to the resource booklet and identify rock type X. So you can see that we're looking at this rock type that we would find in Scotland and in the north. So what kind of rock do we think that is? We have a choice. You mark the X in it. So have a go at that now. Then, following on from that, state one characteristic of a sedimentary rock. So again, it's simple, but you just have to give one feature. If you held a sedimentary rock, what would it look like? So have a go at the questions, pause it, and then the answers. Um, we can see that this would represent granite landforms, and that for the sedimentary rock, the characteristic, you could have any of these answers. And notice, you just get one mark, for each little point that you make. So really straightforward there. Then we look at the defined questions. Now these need to be probably in a sentence for your definition. It's often worth just one mark and it's giving the meaning of a key term. And this is why we focus so much on the key terms and key terms tests within our course. But don't use the key term in your answer. You've got to define it using different words. So again, as an example, define the term abiotic. So you can pause it, have a go now. And basically it's one mark for saying non-living things, not derived from organic matter. Um, try not just to give examples, but you could say non-living things such as water and air. You wouldn't lose marks, you wouldn't gain any more marks. But that could be a good way of helping to define it as well. We then move on to calculate. It can be one or two marks, rarely three, but sometimes it can be. If it's for one mark, you just need to give the answer. If it's worth two or three marks, you need to show your basic working out. You can use a calculator, so always take one in the exam. And make sure you're very carefully look for restrictions. Many people lose marks for not looking at things like to one decimal place or to the nearest whole number. And you've got to know your basic maths, mean, median, mode, range, interquartile ranges, and how to work out percentage increase and decrease. So go back through your maths revision and your geography revision, make sure you know those things. So some sample answers here. Calculate the median value. Now you've got to make sure that you study figure 1c in the resource booklet. You turn to the resource booklet and you would find this information here. So it's calculate the median value. What does median mean? Is it the add them all up, divide them by the number? Is it the middle one ranking or is it the most common feature? So you've got to know the difference between them. Then calculate the percentage increase. So basically the percentage increase is the difference divided by the original number times by 100. So you can have a go at those and let's have a look at the answers now. So we can see the median was the ranking one, it was the one in the middle. And then this is how you could work out the value for the percentage increase. So know your math skills because it's worth over 10% of the paper. Now label, again, very, very simple, but read the question carefully. How many labels do you need to give? Many people lose marks because they don't read the question and they see the diagram and don't realize they've got to mark things on there. So, for example, many people would see this 
and then just think it's a resource and don't bother reading the question. Here it's worth two marks, so you've got to label these key things. So just have a go. What do you think those different cells are called? And the answer is there. A is the polar, B is the Hadley. Next up, draw or plot. Again, could be two or three marks. Read the question and marks available. Again, this is another area where people can lose marks. If you've got two or three of these questions on a paper and similar to the label ones and you don't do these, that is 10 to 15 marks you could lose. That is the difference between grades. That's why it's important you look at all of these. Read the axes. Use a ruler. Be precise because it could be a bar, pie, histograph or scattergraph. Or it could even be putting best lines, best fit lines to show a correlation. So again, having a little quick a quick question, excuse me, how would you fill that in? It's three marks, you've got three things to mark in, and make sure you write the name of the each one and you continue to label it like the exam board have. So you want to copy what they've done. Now we have a look at the compare questions. Now when we have a look at compare, um, it should be worth three marks. Now what we've got to do is make sure we give a similarity and some differences and quote from the resource. So you might want to give figures from the resource to get the marks as well. And make sure you clearly state figure A or figure 1 or graph A shows this, whereas in figure B you can see that. Use these connectives to show that you are comparing them. So, have a go at this. Compare the trends for world population and tons of cereal grain. Having a look at the answers, notice you get one mark for each comparative statement. So here they both increased. One has had a greater relative increase. The production of grain has fluctuated more. So one mark for each of those there. Then we look at the described questions. These can be worth two or three marks and read the question, see how many marks are available. It may be based on a resource, so read the question. Say what you can see. You don't need to give reasons and make sure you give evidence or information from the resource and use connectives to show development of your answer. Okay, so it could be this shows, this means, as seen in. That's all you need to put here. So have a look at this one. Describe the distribution of countries with the highest percentage growth in GDP. So look at the figures here. The highest growth, you're looking at the green ones. How can you describe where they are? Have a go at that now. And there's the answers for that one. So we're going to stop this one here. We'll look at the next video. We'll look at the explain and suggest questions. Um, these are where you're having to show your understanding and give reasons and looking at the different connectives that you can use there. So I hope you found this useful. Have a go at some past papers, uh, read through the questions there, have a look at the mark schemes which you can find online to help you understand the command words and how the different marks are. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. See you again soon. Bye.